This video demonstrates the standard operating procedure with respect to the heat exchanger in the unit operations laboratory at Lafayette College. Before operating the heat exchanger, it is important to be aware of the necessary safety precautions. Standard personal protective equipment including safety glasses, hard hats, closed toed shoes, and long pants must be worn at all times. High pressure steam will be used during the experiment. Heat gloves should be worn when operating steam valves and the steam supply valve should be opened slowly, a few degrees every 10 seconds. Be aware of the potential slipping hazard when working with water. Any spill should be cleaned up in an appropriate manner. Care should also be taken to ensure that the hot water temperature does not exceed 8 degrees Celsius. At low flow rates, it is also possible to boil the water. Set the temperature controller to a value of 50. To start up the heat exchanger, first close the drain port valves 2, 3, 7, and 11, and open the water outlet valve number 19. To access the city water supply valves, open valves 14 and 15. Open valve 4 to initiate water flow through the heater. Check to make sure there is no air in the piping. If there is, flush out the system. After flushing out the air, you can turn on the pump by flipping the pump switch. While wearing heat gloves, slowly open the high pressure steam supply valve 16 a fraction of a turn at a time until it is fully open. The steam coming from the line is very hot and under extremely high pressures so opening the valve quickly can damage the valves and pipes, and is a safety hazard. Open valve 18 to supply air to the air filter regulator, and set the regulator to 20 PSI. Turn on the temperature scanner by flipping the switch to on. The scanner has two modes, hold and scan. To determine the temperature in the hold mode, move the switch related to the desired location to the left and ensure all other switches are to the right. The indicator can also be run in a scan mode. For all the locations you would like to record the temperature for, move the switches to the left. A red light will appear next to the location of the temperature that is being read as it scans. The video related to the pump setup in the unit operations lab, which can be found on the Lafayette Chemical Engineering YouTube channel, contains a full procedure for performing a flow meter calibration. In order to calibrate the flow meter, open valves 5 and 12 to a vertical position to direct flow to the tube entrance and close valve 7. Then, open valve 1 so the rhodometer reads the specified flow rate. To collect water, open valve 11 and close valve 12 to redirect the fluid from the drain into the tube for collection. Adjust the temperature of the hot water by changing the temperature controller until the desired set point is reached as indicated on the scanner, sensor 5, or the inlet hot water sensor, which will vary depending on the configuration used. Similarly, the hot water flow meter can be calibrated. If the hot water flow meter is being calibrated, ensure the steam is turned off by closing valve 16. Make sure valve 12 is open and valve 11 is closed. Adjust V4 to the desired set point. To collect water, simultaneously close valve 12 and open valve 11 to redirect fluid flow from the drain out into the collection tube. Begin by closing valve 8. Adjust valve 1 and 6 to horizontal position to direct the hot water into the tube entrance and cold water into the shell. Set the cold water flow rate to 2 gallons per minute by adjusting valve 1. Adjust valve 4 to the minimum flow rate. Then, control the temperature of the steam using the controller. Turn the knob left to heat and right to cool. Make sure to change the temperature of the controller slowly to avoid high overshoot and account for the time delay. 
record the volumetric flow rate, temperature controller value, and temperature of the hot water stream using temperature sensor 1. Open valve 4 to the maximum flow rate. Increase the temperature of the controller to determine the maximum operating temperature that does not exceed a hot water temperature of 80 degrees Celsius. The minimum operating temperature is out of the city water. However, the minimum hot water temperature should be run at 8 to 10 degrees greater than this value. This can be determined by recording the value for the temperature on sensor 3. This heat exchanger can be run in three different configurations, in two counter current configurations with cold water through the shell or through the tubes, and a co-current configuration with cold water through the shell. We will first discuss how to set up the heat exchanger for counter current flow with cold water flowing through the shell. Begin by making sure valves 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9, and 11 are closed and valves 10 and 12 are open. Open valve 5 horizontally to allow cold water into the shell of the heat exchanger. Turn valve 6 horizontally to direct the hot water through the tubes. Adjust valves 1 and 4 to achieve the desired flow rate for the hot and cold water, respectively. Using temperature sensors 1 through 4, record the inlet and outlet temperatures of the streams. Sensor 1 corresponds to the inlet hot water, sensor 4 is the outlet hot water, sensor 3 is the inlet cold water, and sensor 2 is the outlet cold water. Make sure valves 2, 7, 8, and 11 are closed. To run counter currently with cold water running through the tubes, ensure that valves 1 and 4 are open. Open valves 10 and 12. Adjust valves 5 to a vertical position to direct cold water into the tubes. Turn valve 6 to a vertical position to direct hot water into the shell. Use valves 1 and 4 to adjust the cold and hot water flow rates, respectively. Using temperature sensors 1 through 4, record the inlet and outlet temperatures of the streams. Sensor 3 corresponds to the inlet hot water, sensor 2 is the outlet hot water, Sensor 1 is the inlet cold water, and sensor 4 is the outlet cold water. To run the heat exchanger in a co-current configuration with cold water running through the shell, begin by closing valves 1, 7, 10, and 11. Open valves 2 and 8 to direct cold water into and out of the shell. Open valve 12. Turn valve 6 to a horizontal position to direct hot water into the tubes. Use valves 9 and 4 to adjust the cold and hot water flow rates respectively. Using temperature sensors 1 through 4, record the inlet and outlet temperatures of the streams. Sensor 2 corresponds with the inlet cold water. Sensor 3 is the outlet cold water. Sensor 1 is the inlet hot water. And sensor 4 is the outlet hot water. Close valve 18 to turn off the air supply to the temperature controller. Close the steam supply valve 16. Close the cold water supply valve 14. Close valves 3, 7, and 10. Allow the heat exchanger to cool by pumping cold water through the system for a few minutes. Shut off the recirculation pump motor by flipping the switch to off. Turn off the cold water supply to the recirculation pump by closing valve 15. The heater is now entirely shut down. Open valve 2, 3, 7, and 12 to drain the system and leave valve 9 open. Turn off the steam supply by closing valve 16 and turn off the recirculation pump motor by flipping the switch to off. Let the cooling water flow until the heat exchanger cools down. In the event of a leak in the cooling water, the cooling water should be shut down as well by closing valves 14 and 15. To learn more about the equipment in the Unit Operations Laboratory, watch the related videos on the Lafayette Chemical Engineering YouTube channel.